Hello, and thank you so much for coming by the channel today. I appreciate it. Uh, today, I just want to check in with you guys because it has been a while and also do a little bit of a book haul. Um, so to explain why I haven't been here uh, and I don't want to make it sound dramatic because everyone has stuff going on in their lives, right? But someone very close to me that I love dearly has been in ill health and I have just found it difficult to concentrate. I have hardly been at home. Um, uh, as you know, at the beginning of the month, I was out in California at my brother's house, but then um, um, most recently I was back home in Kentucky. Uh, that is where I'm from, Northern Kentucky at my dad's house. And um, just finding it really hard to focus on anything. I actually, while I was in Kentucky, I had tons of time to read. I mean, tons of time to read. And I didn't for six days straight. I didn't read, read a book. I didn't listen to a book. <laughs> there was no Kindle, uh, nothing. On the day that I went and got most of these books, um, it looked like health-wise everything was going to be fine. So I celebrated by buying books. Um, and, and things are probably still going to be fine. It's just they took a bit of a turn for the worse. And again, I can't seem to focus. <laughs> but I have started another book. I started an audio book on my drive back home uh, to, here to Tennessee. I am listening to Charles... Dickens a life so it's a, a biography by Claire Tomlin on Charles Dickens and I'm over halfway through I am loving this biography <laughs> I did do a bit of research before um, choosing this biography um, I know there's a mammoth biography on Dickens that is considered like the biography this Claire Tomlin book is not that one but I thought I'd start with the Claire Tomlin <laughs> biography on Dickens. And then if my interest is peaked, which so far it is peaked, I will get the mammoth one. I don't even remember who the author of that one is. But um, yeah, I'm really enjoying that audiobook. Uh, this afternoon I'll be doing more house chores. So I, I, I may finish it today. It's not a short book. I feel like the audio is 16 hours and some odd minutes. But anyway, I actually bought some book books, which I haven't done in a while. But that day that I got the good health news, I was so happy. I went to Barnes and Noble and picked up a few books. So without further ado, I picked up A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. I read this in my early 30s. I was going to the play um, at Playhouse in the Park in Cincinnati, and I wanted to read uh a Christmas Carol first before going to the play. So that's the last time I read it. I am nearly 50 now. So like it's been about 20 years or just shy of 20 years. So I definitely want to be reading A Christmas Carol here in December. This is the Chiltern Publishing Edition. And when I was at Barnes and Noble, which shout out to the Florence, Kentucky, Barnes and Noble. They have really beefed up their classic section. I don't know if Barnes and Noble like nationwide have done that, but they'll have the Penguin Cloth Bound. I wish they had more of the Peng Penguin Classics Deluxe Editions. They have some of those, but like they are committed to the cloth bound. And I'm, I only have a couple on my shelf of those because I'm more of a paperback person. But anyway, these children, <laughs> I digress. These children publishing books, they had about 10 different titles. They are beautiful. Like this is like the least beautiful one, but it was the one I wanted to get. Um, they had Jane Austen books. Uh, they had like Jane Eyre, uh, Wuthering Heights. They're just like, so many of them are like a gorgeous uh, floral with gold uh, leafing on the front. And they have the gold leafing on the pages um, and illustrations. It's, it's, it feels like, I don't know what the right word is, but it's that really like um, waxy kind of paper, waxy in a good way. And, um, I would love to start collecting those, but I already had ha I already had uh, five books in my hand, so <laughs> I did. I I just got the one I knew I didn't have on my shelf already. Then the next one I got was One Hundred Years of Solitude. I mean, this book has been recommended to me 
for years. When did this come out? Well, anyway, it's pretty much a modern classic. I think we can all agree on that. I knew I would read this someday, but I just never picked it up never picked it up. And then when I saw it at Barnes and Noble, I'm like, now's the time to pick it up. It may sit, still sit on my shelf for 10 years, but I will get to this. <laughs> um, okay, the next book I got is Marcus Aurelius's Meditations. So on Instagram, I see posts periodically and it'll have quotes from, um, from meditations. And uh, I always enjoy seeing those. As you know, I'm trying to beef up my ancient classics. And um, so far, I've pretty much been focusing uh, on the Greeks, but uh, Marcus Aurelius, I, I mean, I've wanted to get this for years, but what really clinched it was uh, Brandon at Brandon's Bookshelf. And uh, he did a video where he did, I think it was like 10 books that changed his life. And plus, there's this new annotated edition that just came out. So I'm like, now's the time. Pick up this edition. First of all, if you haven't subscribed to Brandon's channel, like you need to. Um, he, he is a very eclectic reader. And I feel like a couple people are pigeonholing him. Um, what's the term that has been bantered around? A dude bro lit? I mean... Brandon just posted two videos on Madeline Miller Searcy. So <laughs> I felt, I mean, Brandon does not need me to defend him, but I was just really taken aback and a bit offended on his behalf um, of um, pigeonholing him like that. And secondly, like, really? You're going to take issue with Marcus Aurelius? Whatever. <laughs> Anyway, I got another Ann Tyler book. Usually I can't stand the cover art on, and saying art is being generous on Ann Tyler books, but this one I love. It's pink, it's cute, and don't even know what Vinegar, Vinegar Girl is about, but I know I want to read more Ann Tyler because I have felt a kinship with her writing and her way of telling stories and her quirky characters, and um, yet I don't feel like I am well read within and Tyler. I've, I've, she has so many books and I think I've read like five or six of them. And then this one, um, Miss Austin. So I was watching Katie at Books and Things and she just did a series of videos on her favorite. So like her 10 favorite classics, her 10 favorite nonfiction. This was, I think, in her 10 favorite contemporary fiction. And she got, she got a little choked up talking about it. I'm like, wow, that says something. So, um, I picked that up too. Um, now, the final book I picked up that day was recommended by Kieran at Katie Books, and that is Francis Buford's Light Perpetual. So I wanted to update you guys on this. Remember in my last video, I said, um, you know, hey, I was looking at what my favorite read so far for the year has been, and if I had to rank them, they're almost all classics which is fine. I love classics. I want to read more classics. I want to be more well read within classics. But that said, I don't want to do that at the price of not appreciating contemporary fiction. Because as we know, there is amazing contemporary fiction. And I just feel like I haven't been steering myself in that direction. So I haven't been picking up on those. And they're going to be the classics of the future. Not that the classic, cla our current classics are going to go away, but um, so uh, so I asked for suggestions. Uh, Kieran suggested this, so I picked it up. But a lot of you commented and said "Remains of the Day" and Greenwood. You said give those a try. So my original plan was to read these in December. So this month, today's December 1st, if I didn't say at the beginning of the video, to read these this month in the hopes that one of them will be, one or more of them will just knock my socks off and take out one of those classic classics um, on my top 10 list. But I'm kind of rethinking that. Um, just where I am right now, and so distracted and uh, who knows, I may be traveling again 
in a few days. So um, part of me thinks don't don't read these right now. Read them when you're in a better mind frame. By the way, I did make note of every suggestion. If you left me a comment on that video, I have written down that title and put your name by it um, so that I can give you credit if indeed I read it and it's a five star read. <laughs> so thank you to everyone who commented. Um, as for how December reading is going to go, I don't know. Um, I'm kind of wanting to lean into Cloak and Dagger Christmas. I feel like a cozy mysteries and some thrillers would be just the thing. Anyway, tell me what you guys are thinking. How does your December look as far as reading goes? Um, have any feel good books? I just don't normally lean towards feel good books and I so want to lean toward it right now. So if you have any suggestions, let me know. And I will see you next time. Bye.